Hi, it's Mark. Welcome back to the shop. And today I'm basically outlining a um, an experiment that's going to come soon. Now, this is something that I've been working on just for a bit in the background and stuff. And what we have here is we have a basically a vessel. So the whole point of this um, experiment and video and this video in particular is what I want to do is I want to. Um, when testing stuff like uh, antifreezes and you know and so on, so with like the Evans and the 5050s and straight water and stuff like that, we can test them in bikes. Um, so the ER5, like I said, that's all been set up in the background. Uh, we've been doing a few tests with the SV and all the rest of it. However, what we can't do, and what is quite important with experiments, is separate things out, or it's more difficult when it's actually on a running machine because that's just the way it is. So that's why i basically came up with the idea of doing this so what i have here it's not finished yet but it nearly is this is six millimeters of uh, perspex and then we have this chamber the walls are eight millimeters thick got some um quarter inch uh, british uh, standard pipe threads into these barbs we've got one at the bottom we've got one on top and then we've also got a pressure gauge that goes up to um one bar so that's what we've got so far um what i need to do is i need to fit this and then there's another windowed clamp that goes over the top i need to thread these holes and so on you can basically see what this is it's just to represent a cylinder it's aluminium it's not perfect because cast aluminium is cast aluminium where this is 60 61 and then what we're going to do so basically what i'll do is i'll, I'll draw this out so what we're going to do is we're going to have a hot plate like we did before i'm writing this all upside down and then we're going to have our chamber here like so with our barb fittings and then our pressure uh, gauge on top with our window inside so we can see what's going on um so then we'll have obviously heat like this so the next thing we need in this entire experiment is we'll have that there, obviously that sat there like that. The next thing we need is we need rubber hoses and then what I've got is I've got this which is the old ER5 um, thermostat housing. Now we don't need these pipes, it's basically this thermostat housing here and then this cap. Um, so there's a better view for you. So it's basically there's a thermostat in there with a temperature sensor and then here's the cap. Um, so I want to basically what we're going to do is we're going to be there's also shit all over it we are going to be pressurizing fluids um, using heat to do that and you know I would like to have this um, uh, pressure release cap um, there just in case and we're using a proper one you know on off a bike and an actual thermostat um, you know the last thing you want is if this thing blows it's going to spray hot fluid in my face and yeah, 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 I know it's not the first time. God, the joys of prison. But, you know, it's something you don't want to be doing. Um, so obviously we'll have some pipe work leading up to this thermostat housing with our thermostat in, like so. And then our pressure cap here. And then obviously the outflow to that. Now, the next thing we need is we need a radiator and check this out. So this is a uh, basically a miniature radiator with two feeds in there. So it flows in one, goes through these veins, this bypass bit and then back out through this one. This is a mini, um, you can see what it is to this kind of scale. This is a mini radiator for CPUs for your water cool computers. Fucking awesome. And if you're a model guy, you know, you're making model engines and stuff, this thing's fantastic. It's like 30 quid and it's full aluminium. Um, I don't know how much pressure it can take, so obviously I'm gonna have to fuck around with this a bit. Um, but then that means that we have our, um, our radiator sorted so we'll have some pipe work from that then at the bottom here which is something i just don't have quite yet which is a um 12 volt 12 volt dc 
um, DC DC pump so it's just basically a fluid pump it's used for you know these little Chinese shitty things the 12 volts um, but then we'll have our pump and then our pump will pump our fluid back in there so the next thing I want to talk about let me just go and get another colour pen and then we'll just go through the setup so the next thing is the setup to all this so imagine we've got all this all plumbed in like I say I'm going to make a bracket and stuff so we can actually connect that properly get rid of these pipes and so on so we can sort all that shit out I need to finish this uh, the pump needs to arrive I need to connect all this shit together so the other thing I've got as well is some silicon this is some silicon tubing um, some black silicon tubing I'm also getting some rubber tubing as well so we can that's the other thing you see we can swap all these things out but the actual experiment itself so number one is we're going to have a temperature um, a fucking thermocouple so I'm going to basically mill a little slot in here so we can have a thermocouple in the bottom so right here would be T1 that would be T1 there um, this is so we know the temperature between the hot plate and actually the temperature going in basically in a sense the energy going in the next thing we'll do is we're going to snake a thermocouple in through here and we are going to put a thermocouple on the side wall there now we could put it on the side wall there we could put it on the other side of this housing let me zoom you in so you can bloody see um, there we go that's better so we can either have it here on the side actually touching the aluminium or we could have it on the other side to the original therm uh, thermocouple on that side um, I, I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit, I'm, I can't make two minds up. So you guys, this is what this video is for. You guys can look at this experiment and then you guys can decide and tell me the pros and cons. Heat coming from just say, you know, your piston and combustion and stuff, then your cylinder wall and then the coolant side of this, uh, it's got to transfer straight through, heat that her thermocouple on and then the heat will be taken away. The heat will be taken away from the whole thing. Uh, I'm a bit funny. Over here, um, we're going to see more of a cooling effect so there should be a lower temperature so it's either this one or this one so let's just call this uh, A up on the side wall and B on the bottom and I can't do B's upside down obviously <laughs> the wrong way so A is this side on the side wall B is on the bottom adjacent to the uh, T1 uh, thermocouple so just tell me what you think and your reasons why and all the rest of it the next thing we're going to do is we're going to stick one here so this will be T3 um, because this is into the radiator then we're going to have um, T4 here because this then is out so what this will give us is we can do loads of things here we can change this we can change our cap if we need to when we start looking at other pressures we can remove or insert the um, Oh, <laughs> thermostat it means we can measure how much heat has actually been uh, you know removed um, this thing actually this fan uh, this uh, radiator is actually designed to have four corners so you can actually have a CPU kind of fan sit on the front so we will get a fan for it as well um, I've, we've, I've got one knocking around here actually but we'll get a fan for it as well so we can also control that and see how much difference the fan makes on and off um, the pump well what we can do with the pump is for the power for the pump we can put an amp meter here um, from our multimeter and we can actually test the draw on this pump that will give us a good idea about viscosity um, of the fluids not only that is as they heat up we can see that the uh, draw the current draw from the uh, power supply unit because that's what we we'll have the power supply unit giving us a digital readout we're also going to use a fluke multimeter and actually test it at the um, positive and negative terminals and actually see what the current draw is across it um, we can stick other fluids in this this is the whole point because it's exactly the same system we can empty it out the hot plate gives us um, control of the actual temperature and stuff like this so what I want to know is where can you see problems with this where can you see um, there's a better way to do this like I said I'm a bit unsure about which one to put on what side um, but yeah you know give us give us an idea of what you think we'll be able to read the pressure obviously 
that's another thing the other great thing about this as well is that we can also see so they keep on banging on about cavitation and stuff. I call it vaporization of a liquid when it starts to boil. Um, <laughs> they seem to call it cavitation at Evans. But this is just a protective coating on this stuff is actually transparent. Um, you know, so we'll be able to actually see what is happening at the cylinder wall, so to speak. We can read the gauge pressure. You know, there's a thermostat in here. There's also, like I say, the cap that's a bit like a built-in bit of protection for us. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of things, you know, we've got all these temperatures, we've got the hot plate temperature, we're going to have ambient temperature, so we'll put that as well as going to be ambient temperature. Um, I'm trying to think of a way, and someone please let me know if you can think of a way we can try and, if there's a way we can tell if the thermostat is open or closed, even if it's just like a little grounding circuit where there's a little LED or something like that, I'm, I'm, I haven't really thought about that yet, I haven't got into that yet, I need to literally pop, I need to start playing with this first and then see what we can do. Um, but temperature, we can see how well the this fluid is cooling. And the thing is, the other thing is, I need to do is I need to fuck around with a hot plate and uh, just keep on increasing the temperature off camera until I start to see temperatures. Just say here, it might be worth putting a thermocouple um, just under the thermostat. But as soon as the thermostat opens, that's the thing. We're all about running conditions here, around about 100 degrees. What is the pressure of each fluid? What is the temperature? How well is the radiator losing heat? Yeah, yeah. How much is the radiator losing heat? How much is it actually cooling the fluid? What is the, the draw on the pump? And so on and so on and so on. And we can keep on. The beauty about this is we can keep on tailoring it so we can, you know, change the fluids. We can remove the thermostat, keep the thermostat, change the cap, um, delete the radiator completely. Look at the current draw and the viscosity relationship between, you know, what the current draw is of the pump. What's it like with no pump? So on and so forth. We can actually see in the window and actually see what's happening. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Stuff we wouldn't normally be able to do. So uh, with an engine setup, we're still going to do the engine setup because at the end of the day, this isn't per perfectly representative. That's why we have to do the actual test with an actual engine to you know do the representative um, experiments and all those. Hope that makes sense. Like I say, leave your comments, discuss this out. It'd be great to see people's ideas and what have you. Have I made a big fucking boo-boo? You know, stuff like that. And I'll see you in a bit.